Okay? I just, when I got up here to, uh, when we are praising the Lord and worshiping, there's a young fellow standing up the back, and uh, he started leaping in the air. And I thought, man, I'd love to be able to do that. And he was so close to that back wall. I don't know how close you were to that, but you almost hit your head on that ceiling there where the lights are. But, oh, man, I don't know. But singing that song, that's who he is, folks, eh? That's who he really is. How many people believe he's a champion? He, he never stops working. And, and I, I'm so excited because it doesn't matter. And, and, and as I was just starting to think about the storms and life, and anybody ever gone through a storm in life? Anybody ever had a trouble and, or a problem, and, and, but God somehow or other brought you through? Somehow or other you got victorious. Somehow or other you overcame. And, and today, you know, you, you think, oh, that's, that's in the past now. It's gone. Because you see, Jesus never, ever, 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 ever stops working. He's always working. Amen. And, 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 and I know that he's got a plan. <laughs> he's got a plan. And, and if somehow or other, if in our feeble minds, if we can somehow or other penetrate the darkness and penetrate the, the, all the rubbish that the enemy is pouring in, if we can just go past that and go through that. You ever been in an aeroplane where it's, when it's storming down the, down the bottom? You know, and it's dark clouds and lightning and goodness knows what. And, and the plane takes off and, and you're going through the clouds and it's a little bit bumpy. But all of a sudden, you come through. And it's as bright as... And you think, man, I haven't seen the sun for a while, but it was there all the time. <laughs> hey? He never stops working. You know, the sun's always shining, amen? It's always shining. And Father, I just ask you today that capture, capture us, my God. Take us up into the realm of the Spirit where we see beyond our natural ability and we see in the realm of the Spirit that all is well. Lord, that you've already triumphed over coronavirus. You've already broken its back in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just give you all the praise, give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. I want to share this morning about take possession of who you are in Christ. Take possession of who you are in Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm a brand new man. I don't know about you, but I'm an overcomer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you see, to be able to achieve that, be able to walk in that, I've got to take possession of it. And possession comes from confession. As I start to speak, if I just speak negative about myself all the time, well, that's the result I'll have. But if somehow or other I don't listen to what I'm thinking in the natural, but I'm listening to the Word of God and what God says about me, and I start to quote what God says about me, I believe what God says about me will come to pass. Do you believe that today? And I, I tell you what, our, our future is amazing. Do you believe that? I, I really believe that. So, you know, if we're going to take possessions of who we are in Christ, we've got to build our inner man, the real you. The person that I see now is not the real you. There, there's a real you that's on the inside of you. I want to just read a couple of scriptures to you this morning, and, and, uh, and I just pray that God would help us and, and, and show us and reveal himself to us. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though the media is full of rubbish about coronavirus even though it's talking about wars, and even though it's talking about the Chinese and what they're doing and how they're doing this and, and how we're doing that, we are not going to lose heart, amen? See, if you lose heart, you begin to go down the gurgler. If you lose heart, you lose faith, if you lose what God says, we've, we've got nothing left to work with. We've got no answers. So therefore, we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. See, if I can catch that for a moment, whatever the enemy wants to put on me, though it's designed by him to destroy me, 
If I can keep my eye on Jesus, it will work for me. It will not work against me. It will work for me. And it's going to do something in me. While we do not look at the things... Sorry, let me go back to 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Oh, Father, help us to catch that in Jesus' name. Help us to leap in joy in Jesus' name. Help us to leap for joy, amen, at the expectation of what you're about to do and what you're about to pour out upon planet Earth in Jesus' mighty name. You're going to destroy every, every, every threat of the enemy. And so that will give you all the praise and will give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Whatever area of your Christian life, whatever area you look at, say prayer, faith, knowledge, it can only be, it can never be built unless you build upon the Word of God. Amen. You can't build upon feelings. You can't build upon assumptions. You can't build upon anything else but the Word of God. Whatever area of your Christian life, whatever area you look at, whatever it might be, it cannot be built unless it's built upon the Word of God. We must build our life on God's holy Word. Amen? The Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. Doubt, unbelief has no place in the believer's heart. Doubt and unbelief has no place in the believer's heart. I had a revelation the other day. We were talking to some folks there and, and we were just talking about things. And In Mark 9, 23, verse 24, this revelation is where most people are at today and I include myself. If we're going to be honest with ourselves, if we're going to be honest, there's things there that creep into our lives that, that jump up from time to time. Mark 9, 23, verse 24, there was a boy that had uh, deaf eardrums. He had a deaf and dumb spirit. Jesus said to the Father, If you can believe, all things are possible to them who believe. If you can believe. Here's a father there that's, that's there. But immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Cried out with tears. Cried out with uh, realizing that, that there was lack in his life. Yes, I believe, Lord. I believe that we're going to have a revival. I, I believe that we're going to see great things and you can preach and you can say and you can declare and goodness knows what. But God, please help my unbelief. Help me when that enemy comes in and tries to steal. Have faith in God. Have faith in His Word. Amen. Not in what Neil says or somebody else says, but have faith in God, His Word. Have faith in His Son. Have faith in the mighty Holy Spirit. Mark 11, 22 and 23, famous words. Famous, famous, famous. So Jesus answered and said, Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Then, you know, easy to say. But if you're going through a storm in your life, if you're going through a trial or a tribulation, and you've got to understand that these light afflictions are not going to kill me. They're going to work for me. If I can turn the tide, because so, so often when troubles come, and please, I have to put myself in this place. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I believe. And when, when the enemy comes, it's so easy to, to sort of roll over and say, Oh, God, this, this is too difficult, it's too hard, I, I can't see my way out of this, I, I have got no answer for this situation that I'm in right now. But 
but somehow or other, if I can, if I can build up the courage to start to say, but my God, I know that you never stop working. My God, I know, and, and, and God, and somehow or other, with an understanding, God, you're greater than anything. And you can, you can work this miracle for me. And all those things that Sharon was prophesying about this morning, those mighty men of God and women of God in the past that stood before impossible situations, that stood before walled city, uh, cities and, and oceans that they could not cross. But they heard the word of God and, and they applied the word of God. Lift up your rod. He lifted up his rod. He did what God spoke. He heard the word. Today, you know, it, it, it's so simple. Lift up your rod. Oh God, that, that is so simple because of the situation that's in front of me is ginormous. But you just say, lift up your rod. According to your word, be it under me. Hallelujah. So he lifted up his rod and the seas were open. Just speak your word, Lord, and, and hear what God says and apply the word to your life. March around the city. It's, you cannot penetrate this in the natural, but in the realm of the Spirit, there's a different story altogether. Amen. According to your word. According to your word. Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, Neil, or John or Jack or Jill, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, that's the inner man, but believes that those things he says will come to pass, then he will have whatever he says. Does not doubt in his heart, Father, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help us today. God's word is the source of faith. It has to be the source. Faith is simply believing God's word. In John 1.14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace. Full of truth. Jesus, when he came to this earth, We've got to see him as our example. He came. We beheld his glory. We beheld his power. We, we read about everything that he did. We read about the, 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 the mighty, mighty miracles that he did. We beheld his glory. Jesus came down and he spoke these words and, and, and I believe he's trying to simplify something that's so magnitude and he said, I simply do what I saw my father do. What did he see his father do? He was standing beside him when his father said, let there be light. He, he saw and heard his father speak. And because there was no doubt in his heart, whatever he spoke came to pass. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. But then, you see, that's good for Jesus, amen. But then he says, in John 14, 12, he says, these things that I do, he said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. But now I want to say to you, these things that I do, these things that I say, you can do and say also. And see, that's how we walk, by faith now and not by sight. That's how we call things that be not as though they were. That's why we don't really listen to our sense knowledge. But we talk to spirit knowledge that says God is the God of the impossible. All things are possible to those who believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I only do what I hear and see my Father do. Now you do what I tell you to do. What stops us? Doubt and unbelief. Anybody here ever had that disease? 
It's worse than foot and mouth. Worse than coronavirus. It's called doubt and unbelief. You see, what I didn't realize that I had an unconscious background of doubt in my life that had been built over years and years and years of walking on this planet as a human. Things that people who let you down. A car salesman that says this car is a beautiful car. It is a perfect car, but you find out you buy a lemon. People promise you things that they'll help you. Different things. And so when somebody says something to you, it has to filter through doubt and unbelief. Will they really come good? Will they really do what they say? So you become a Christian. You get born again. And now you hear about Jesus. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And you don't understand that doubt and unbelief has already been built inside you. And so when Jesus says something, we, we sort of question it in our mind. The question that we go, oh man, I don't know. As a, as a, as a pastor, starting off building a church and you, you, you go to seminars and Clark would talk to us about moving in the spirit and the words of knowledge and all that sort of stuff and we'd go back home from those conferences, oh hallelujah, I'm going to move in the spirit, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. There's a few pastors here that know what I'm talking about exactly. And so you pray and you do whatever you can and, and you get up the next Sunday morning and, and you're full of faith and full of hope and full of joy and everything like that. And you say, there's somebody here and you're having problems with your eyes. Oh my God. And you see a hand go up and you say, oh, praise the Lord, there's somebody here. And, uh, you know, it works, it works, it works. And then the person stands up and starts walking to you and you see the seeing eye dog. <laughs> oh, not that. No, 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 no. You misunderstood. <laughs> it was itchy eyes. I should be more of a sick. And, and doubt and unbelief just floods into your being. But you see, reality is this, is that Jesus, to him, that was not difficult. And if only you could have had faith and, and, and not be just foolishness or presumption, but, but just, you know, and every time you, you do it like that, you know, like Man, I've been to India and I've been to places all over the world and, and seen amazing miracles, seen blind eyes open, seen deaf ears open, the dumb speaking, demons cast out. You see all these sort of things that, you come back to Australia and it's a different story. Pride and there's so many things there that, that get around you. I've said this story many times when we started Suncoast that, that we, we wanted a school and I, I left school when I was 13 and, 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 and I had to become the principal of the school. The fear that gripped my heart under unbelief and doubt. I was such a mess. I was a nervous wreck. But I had to go along because this was a, this, the church. This is what we're going to do. So I go along. But God came with me. Amen. God is smarter than any university lecturer. Hallelujah. He is smarter than the smartest person on this planet. And he helped this person even though with, he must have had more confidence in, in wanting the school or more desire to have the school than I did. <laughs> We did. <laughs> Amazing God. But what I'm saying is this, is that, that God is, is trying to help us. And, and out of that, out of that, my light affliction, I, I thought it was the end of the world. I actually said to God as I sat there trying to do these examinations and I had to get a, an 85% pass. And I said, my God, I've never got an 85% pass in my life. And, and I honestly said to God, I, I'm not joking here, I'm not joking. I put my hands on the desk and I looked up to heaven and I said, listen, I can make a big enough fool of myself 
I don't need your help. I'm not joking. I was sincere. I was so sincere. The person next door to me had already passed four exams and I still had my first one. And I, with trembling, I went up with the first one, I handed it to him, and they were marking him on the spot for us so that we could just move on. And 96%. And, and I looked at one of the questions and I said, I noticed the cross, and I said, what was wrong with that one? <laughs> and she said, the answer was philosophy. And I never had the heart to tell her that I'd written philosophy, but I've spelled it so wrong she couldn't recognize it. These light afflictions are working for us. And so when, when I got a 96 or average or something like that, it might have been 94, I forget, to be honest with you. But I, I, I just thought, my God, nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too hard for you. God, if I can only believe, all things are possible. If only I can believe, all things are possible. I'm taken, about, taken back. Taken back what God has won for us. Taken back the victory. Unbelief, it stops us. What an amazing God we serve, amen? What an amazing God. Can, can you imagine Jesus standing at the tomb of Lazarus? In John eleven thirty nine, 39, he stands there. Man, I, I've gone through this scene. I've, I've pictured this scene. Jesus, all the people around about him, all you need is the devil's little helpers from time to time to tell you you won't make it or you're no, not good enough or that wasn't any good or this wasn't any good. And, and he's standing there and, and he said, where have you placed, where have you put him? He said, he's, he's in there, but he says, Roll the stone away. Martha says, don't do that. He's been dead four days. He now stinks. Can I say this? Her words that she spoke to Jesus stunk more than the dead body. Because those things will kill you. Negative words will kill you. I've said it many times. The person that says sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. He, they got that very wrong. I'd rather have a stone than a. Roll the stone away. Martha said he stinks. He's been there for four days. Can you imagine Jesus standing in front of that thing? Saying, man, I hope this works. I'm going to be the biggest fool in town if, if this don't work. I believe how... No, he had confidence. And what he, what he, what he said after that, if you, if you read it in uh, John 11, 40 uh, through to 44, he, he, said, he said, Father, I know that you hear me. I, I, I don't even have to say a word, really. I'm doing this for their sake. I'm, I'm just doing this so that they might believe that you sent me. Jesus did a lot of things to show us how to work, how to do things, how to go, what to do. He spoke to that, that thing and, and, and that stone, as they rolled the stone away, then he spoke those words, Lazarus, come forth. Power. Next minute. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And he just turned and said, Loosen. Walk away. What, what an amazing God. 
Jesus did so many things that nobody else has ever done on this planet. He had faith. Jesus didn't just say, oh, I, I hope this works. I, I, please help me. See, he had a quiet. Everybody say quiet. Assured. I've heard a lot of people try to prove they've got faith by their mouth. But you see, there's a quiet assurance. A quiet assurance. An unconscious belief. Something you really don't have to think about. And certain things that, that we're like that in the natural. I don't think about if I sit on a chair that's going to break. I know it's going to carry my weight. I don't understand my car. But I get inside my car and I just put the key in and I start the thing up and away I go. I don't even think about it. I don't get to my car and say, oh my God, oh my God, I hope this works. Because you see, now I have an unconscious belief that it's going to start. I have an unconscious belief. If it doesn't start, I'll ring my mechanic. <laughs> but I've got an unconscious belief that it will start. I've got an unconscious belief that certain things are going to happen. I turn the light switch on, a light will come on. Jesus had that quiet assurance, an unconscious belief, something you have to, you don't have to think about it, you just know. Call that, that man, he came out, Hopping. Jesus did things that no other human had ever done when he came on the planet. He did things. We saw certain people of the Christian faith that as, as, as God came upon them, they started to do things. You see, I believe that that's God taking the seals of things that have been hidden, the mysteries that are still there open, the things that are that are going to happen in the body of Christ in the future that's going to blow our minds. God's manifestation of His presence in different things, His glory. Man, I, I, I'm excited about glory. His glory, His glory is going to come down. Amen. His glory is going to come down. But He did, he did things. And can, you, can you imagine when His mother came to Jesus, when He was beginning His ministry, uh, and, and they were at a wedding, and, and, and they, he said, she said to him, there's no wine, they've run out of wine. He said, woman, what do you expect me to do? It's before my time. And she just said, whatever he says, do you do it. And so they filled the, the, the pots up with water, and they poured a cup, and they took it to the, to the guy, what do they call the guy, the head guy there anyway. I took it to him. Can you, can you imagine Jesus standing back there saying, man, I hope that works. If he, if he has a swig of that and spits it out, I'm in trouble. But the guy, you know, he, he did things that, that would that blow your natural mind, turn water into wine. He did lots of things. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says, Jesus has delivered us from the power of darkness or from the authority of Satan. You've been delivered from that? Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son or the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. You see, I am forgiven. Are you forgiven? I'm forgiven. In Ephesians 1, 7, it says, according to the riches of his grace. Jesus moved in power. He moved in authority. He, he did things to boggle the natural mind. The ones that he was working with, he had to, he had to challenge the way they thought. 5,000 people. He says, give them something to eat. They straightway go to the natural thinking. 
We can't, there's nothing, we can't give, we've got nothing to give them. We're too far away to go and buy some food. So what have you got? See, what have you got today? We've got a faith in God that if we can just start to use it, God will break it and, and, and he will feed it. And they got these few fish and a couple of loaves and they started, and he started to break it. He gave thanks and he lifted it up to heaven and, and he gave thanks and he began to break it. And they took up so many large baskets over. He's a miracle worker, amen. He, he walked on water. He, he did so many amazing things. But one of the most amazing things is that he redeemed me. He redeemed me with his blood. I've been translated into the kingdom of his son and love. I, I've, been, I've been taken out of and I've been brought into. And if I, if I continue to live in the natural world, well, things there, doubt will continue to rob me. But if I somehow or other slip into the realm of the spirit and start to believe, you see, what redemption really means is that Satan has been utterly defeated. And when I say I am redeemed, I am forgiven, that means that Satan's influence on my life has been destroyed. But if he can find a little way in through doubt and unbelief, well, he will destroy me. Satan was stripped of his authority and dominion. Satan's authority and dominion were stripped from him so that any Christian, how many Christians have we got here today? How many born-again believers? Come on. I want you to identify with this. You're a born-again believer. Any Christian, any believer, no matter what his or her condition has been in, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, can by whispering the name of Jesus and confessing his lordship can step out of bondage and into perfect liberty. Does that make sense? That to be aware of that, to be aware that, that it doesn't matter what I've done, it doesn't matter where I've been, it doesn't matter how bad I've been. Today, as a born-again believer, if I can just whisper that name, if I can just, God, you are my Lord, you're my Savior, you live inside me, you dwell inside me. The greater one lives inside of me. That means today that I can be step out of bondage into perfect liberty. I can be free. I can jump like that young man at the back was jumping at the presence of God. We can get excited. We can start to shout for God. Romans 6.14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. Or Satan shall not lord it over you anymore. Redemption has created a new man. I'm a new creation. I, I'm a brand new person. What that really means, this new creation, is master of sin. Master over sin. In the name of Jesus, listen to this. In the name of Jesus, the weakest child of God in his, is an absolute master of Satan and demons. In the name of Jesus, let me say it again, the weakest child of God is an absolute master of Satan and demons. Friend, let me encourage you. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up, you people of God. Rise up. Confess who you are. Take back. Repossess who you are in Christ. Claim it. Speak it. Share it. Don't hold back. Don't, don't, don't linger at the gate. Open the gate that will set you free. You are more than a conqueror. You are a champion. You're a child of God. It doesn't matter how weak you are. It doesn't matter how uneducated you are. It doesn't matter. God can put you over. God can make you more than a conqueror. 
Light afflictions are working for us. Amen. They're not here to destroy us. They're here to build us. I believe that God can build us. Amen. I believe that God will, will raise us up. We've been, we've been given so many precious promises. The Word of God tells us how a Christian can live. But many times the church has failed. The church is in some backwater. But until some people start to get a bit of grunt, get a little bit of, I don't know what, to break open the, the, that, that wall, knock that wall of unbelief down, that wall of doubt down, that, that wall of confusion, whatever it might be, and say, hell will have to freeze over, God, but I'm going to believe, I'm going to put my trust in you. God, you are the answer, amen. And if God's going to have a move of God, he's not just going to come down and do it on his own. He's going to do it for his church, amen. He's going to do it for you and me. He's going to do it through people. So, Father, this morning, I'm asking you just to have your way in our lives. Father, I'm asking you to come in your own special way. And Father, just move by your Spirit in our midst. Father, I pray you take the blanket of doubt from our mind. Father, open the, the Word to us. Father, as we read your Word, I pray that it would come alive. It just wouldn't be a storybook. Lord, it would come alive. And you spoke to the disciples and told them what they could do to go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. They just didn't think, man, that's, we can't do that. They went out and did it. The Seventy came out, come back, and even the demons were subject to it. Father, I pray that we would be doers. God, the people here in this place that begin to rise up and lay hands on people and believe for healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Father, we just give you all the praise and give you all the glory and everybody said amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. God is a good God, amen. He loves you. He cares for you. He, and I, I believe this morning that, and, and really honestly, I, I've, I've come to the awareness. I've been saved for a long time. I've seen a lot of miracles. I've seen people touched by the power of God. I've seen a demonstration. I also know that the enemy doesn't mess around. He comes in again and tries to steal from you. John 10 says, for the enemy comes to rob, to kill, to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Unless we can break into that more abundant life, friends, we're just a clanging symbol. I want God to do His work in my life. I, 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 I guess as you go through life and you, you feel some of the trials and the tribulations, and, and it's very, very easy to say, or let go. It's very easy to say, God, well, you know, I've run the course, I've done this, I've done that. It's time for somebody else. Praise God, we've got some young people over there that are going to pick up the banner, amen. But I don't want to hand them a banner of unbelief. I don't want to hand them a banner of negativity and failure. I don't want, I want, don't want to hand them a banner that says it doesn't work anymore. It used to work. It I want to hand them a banner that says it will work. It does work. And it is working. Because God never stops working. And some of us have got to bust through. I've got to bust through some stuff. I, I'm, I'm human, amen? I've got to break through the, the attack of the enemy if he comes to, to the buffet you, to, to try to stop you, to tell you you're finished, to tell you it's over, to tell you all this rubbish. So this morning, if you're going through some things like that, don't stop in the middle. When you stop in the middle, he's got you. Go through it, amen? Go through it. Go through it. Go through it and come out the other side. Like that plane taking off in the, in, in the, in the turmoil of a storm, but going through the clouds and then breaking out into the sunshine. If you're like that this morning, you're honest enough to say that's me. I'm honest enough to say that's me this morning. I need that. 
If you're honest enough this morning, say, come on, let's join our faith together. Let's believe for a breakthrough, amen? Let's believe for a breakthrough. I'm just going to open this altar to you right now if you want to come. Oh, there are a few honest ones. Come on, just come. 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 Come.